Why do periodic signals have discrete frequency spectra? Let's start by looking at a non-periodic signal. And here's a signal here. It's a smooth signal. And we know that the Fourier transform tells us the frequency components of that signal. And this is a smooth low pass signal. So you can see in the frequency domain, the low frequencies have significant components and the high frequencies have rolled off. But this shows here there are all frequency values. So now let's look at a periodic signal. Here we have a signal that repeats in time. In the frequency domain, the Fourier transform shows a discrete frequency spectra where there are only these particular values of frequency that are contributing to this waveform. And why is that? Well, let's think about this signal in the time domain. So here I've just redrawn the signal here and I'm going to draw some of its components below it. Let's think about the zero frequency component because this has an offset from the, the zero value and that is a zero frequency constant offset. So here we can see that here, this is the frequency component that is going to add together with other frequency components to give us this waveform. So first of all, at zero frequency, we can see there is a component and that's this component over here on the Fourier transform. Now let's think, what about if we increase the frequency and think about other waveforms that are contributing to this waveform here so that when we add these up, we get this waveform. Well, clearly, because it's periodic, there's going to be a significant component from this waveform here with a matching period. So this is a period here of capital T, and this is 2T, and we would assume and expect that there would be a significant component from this frequency which has the same period. So this is frequency equals zero, the constant one. This is frequency equals one divided by T. And we can see clearly that's gonna be a significant component in there. Now let's think, of, and that over here I should say is this component here, one divided by T over here. So what about these frequencies in between? Why aren't there any of these frequencies contributing? Well, let's just think about it for a minute. If we had a waveform which was at a lower frequency than, than this, between zero and one on T, then in the time domain, this would be a waveform with a longer period. And clearly you can see any waveform with a longer period is not going to be ready to repeat in the next period. So the, because we have to have, it's periodic, so whatever is in between zero and T has to be also the waveform between T and 2T. And that can't be the case for any of these sinusoidal components with a longer period than capital T. It just can't be that it's going to contribute to something that repeats in the next period. So I think if you look at it like this, you can clearly see that we're not gonna get any frequency components between zero and one on T. What about if we think about increasing from one on T? Well, again, the same thing holds. This will be for waveforms which have a shorter period. And again, any waveform, any sinusoidal waveform that has a shorter period is not going to be repeating as it crosses this boundary at capital T. So we're looking at our waveform up here, if it's contributing, this one, if it's a slightly higher frequency, will be shorter. And again, it's not gonna repeat. And so when we look in our waveform up here, the contribution would cause it to not be periodic until we get up to a frequency which is twice this frequency. So a frequency waveform here, for example, is twice the frequency of here. This period here is T divided by two. So the frequency equals two divided by T. And this component here is one where at that boundary of capital T there, it is repeating itself. And so its contribution into the overall waveform will be one that will match up with the, uh, with the, the waveform from this time to here being the same as the waveform from this time to this time. So clearly we can see that a frequency that's twice this fundamental frequency will also be able to contribute. And when you can see you add these two, this waveform comes down, uh, the overall waveform is going up a little bit here. Well, that's being contributed to from this peak here and this peak here as well. And these are both contributing to each other at this time, giving the large value here. So when you're adding these waveforms together to get this one, clearly if the 
overall waveform is periodic, it can only have components that are at the fundamental frequency and then multiples of the fundamental frequency. I've done two here, but it could also be three times and four times and so on. And so over here, we've got these delta functions where there's no possibility of a frequency between zero and one on T, no possibility between one on T and two on T, and so on for all the higher multiples. So hopefully you can see by looking in the time domain and thinking about what's needed for a periodic signal, that therefore the spectra must be discrete for periodic signals. So if this video has helped you, please give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Uh, look at the description below. You'll find a link to a web page which has a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos.